heaven. You will recall that the Senate asked this committee to investigate the alleged removal or suspension or compulsory leave or whatever you call it of some staff of the NDDC by the interim management. We met the last time we took a position paper from the Civil Service uh, Commission and from the lawyer representing the, the staff that were either sacked or sent on compulsory leave or whatever term you may call it. And we decided that today, in that meeting, sorry, the NDDC management or the internal management did not come for reason of the fact that there was COVID and they cannot leave Portacot to attend the investigative hearing. And we decided that as soon as the COVID protocols are relaxed, we will reconvene and invite the NDDC particularly to present their position. I must say that as we were closing that the, the NLC, uh, NLC came in, the president of the NLC, as we were just leaving, he came in to present the position of the NLC with regard to the matter in question. And that day we also advised and pleaded with the civil service, if you remember their submissions, they submitted that, apart from telling us that the position, the position of the civil service and the procedure that are supposed to be taken in the normal civil service to send somebody on mandatory leave or to send him on compulsory or whatever you call it. We requested them to look at the NEDC rules and to address us accordingly in writing. They have replied us, have set out the conditions, the circumstances which you can terminate based on the rules of the NDDC, which is primarily drawn from the, the NDDC rules and regulations. And so, Prince Paul today, we are supposed to hear from the entire management of the NDDC, with special reference to the action they took. So I would like to know, this committee would like to know, from the clerk of the committee, whether invitation was extended to the NDDC.
or the interim management of the NDDC? An invitation was extended to interim management. I have a good time. Go ahead. Here to investigate appropriateness of the alleged arbitrary survey on the 13th July 2020. Then, I would to invite you and other members of the interim management committee, the IMC, to present a detailed submission regarding the action taken by the Commission on Investment SB 046, White House National Assembly Complex, Abuja. Did you get any further correspondence from the a reply from them or uh, in terms of because uh, I can't see any of the management here. Uh, what I may call the uh, rest of interim management. Did you get any other reply from them? I'm pleased to forward to you 22 copies of our detailed submission on the alleged arbitrary staff of the management staff of the NDDC as requested in the letter under reference. The Commission wishes to be in attendance to make its submission as scheduled in the invitation. Please accept the assurance of our highest regard. This letter was written on the 8th of July, 2020. MD, by Mercy Babawale. From the IMC, uh, the Commission that is here, Yes. We came with MD. He's having a session with the Public Accounts Committee. And that session started at 11 o'clock. And this one is 12. So we're believing that uh, any moment from now we'll be here. We are really very, very sorry. But I know you'll be here. So he says presentation since when? 11 o'clock. Uh, do you think? If we are joined for one hour, it will be okay for him. Do you think so? I think so. Are you are in contact with him? Not that I think so. Go there and look for him. It's a confirmed person. Huh? It's two hours. Two hours? Two hours? Do you know that this is the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? The Senate, the other committee on investigating, I think one of them was. I think there are two, mem uh, two, two members, or there are five members of the interim management. Okay, less one. There are four. So none of them is here. There are four. We'll go back to the office. Two hours. What do we do? Let's give him one hour. If he doesn't come, we'll go. And when he can come another day. That's all. the two hours, the clerk should please inform the members we can reconvene before the two hours. So I want to sincerely appeal to all my colleagues that um, we reconvene Investigative hearing 
on the, the actions of the IMC with regard to some staff of the Niger Delta Development Commission. This is our third time of sitting on this matter. You will recall that we met some time ago and we wrote to all the parties consigned to come and the interest groups and the, the, the entering management did not come because according to them the COVID and they sought for a, another date to enable them to come. With the relax of the pro protocols in uh, the COVID, we invited them because we need to submit our report to the Senate. We fixed the meeting for today, 12 noon. We were informed that um, the MD is not available, that he is in the House of Representatives, and we are joined for two hours, which was supposed to we are supposed to reconvene here by quarter to three. It's exactly 20, about 20 minutes past three. So I want to know from the people who spoke to us, uh, can I know, can we know if the MD or any representative of the MD, I mean of the IMC, Can, is around to present the position of the management, of the uh, interim management. I'm very much humbled by what distinguished senators are doing for us here. I appreciate the fact that we are gathered here and then. Um, out of your way, you, you have to step down the matter. And uh, let me also say that ever then we've been in touch with the MD. What we're getting from there is that he is not being allowed to leave the chambers there for this place. And, and we've been calling and calling and calling. Um, he wishes to be here, I must say, honestly. He's even very worried there, very, very worried. But the truth is that they are not allowing him to, to, to leave that venue. So that is where we are. He's dead. But there are four other members. And if I observed very clearly, the presentation they made to uh, the ad hoc committee and the, the uh, another person made a presentation on behalf of the IMC. That's why we're asking, even if the MD is held up in the House of Rep, is there no other person from the IMC who has the capacity to present the case, or uh, the, the case of the IMC on his behalf. To adopt your presentation 
which you distributed, which you gave to us, do you want us to adopt it as the position of the IMC? I, I am not a member of the IMC, and uh, I want also claim to be so. Because if we, what I'm asking is that this position paper is not signed. It is not signed by anybody. It's not signed. It's not. Yeah? It's not signed by anybody. That is why we are asking you, I am a lawyer, and I understand the implication of a document not being signed. I said, do you, as far as this committee is concerned, as far as this committee is concerned, the presentation is not signed. Therefore, we take it, 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 I don't know whether you have anything to tell us. This presentation is not signed. There's a covering letter yet, but the presentation itself is not signed by the IMC. Not even by a staff of the commission. So if you think this is your presentation and you want us to adopt it, can you, can you come and sign it? And then we'll take it as the presentation of the, IMC, the position of the IMC. And if we have any question to ask you, then we decide whether we're going to take or take you or not. Yes, you're free. You're free. Thank you for your understanding, sir. Um, your sincerity is also a lawyer, and then um, I know the implication of what an unsigned document is. Like I said earlier, I am not a member of the INC. I am an employee of NDC. And um, yes, I won't claim that I know the contents of the document. I do. I said I will not claim that I don't know the contents of the documents. Yes, I do. But again, I can't stand here and append my signature to it because. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's the way it is. If it had been signed by my MD, I could read it on his behalf, I could also adopt it. But it's not been signed, and I think I will leave it at that. I can only, I can only plead with this honorable committee. Like I said, I appreciate your humility, I appreciate your understanding. I am actually personally moved, and even with my colleagues, for the second time you're here again today, I am very much humbled. So if you can oblige us, like the chairman said earlier, you didn't plan to sit today. You came for this singular purpose. If you don't mind, sir, can we take another day? Thank you very much. From the attitude, from the actions, one doubts whether people really are interested in this investigation. Otherwise, there is no reason why you should make a presentation and you did not sign it. And then you, you are telling us that um, you have a presentation. But there are issues that you, are, you raised that somebody, whoever, whoever wrote this, if you look at paragraph two or three of the so-called document, we wanted to take you off on that. But since you said you cannot sign it, so there is no presentation, we take it that you didn't make a presentation to the committee. You have not made a presentation. That this, this document is not signed. This is an unsigned document. So there is nothing before us. And as I said, can you sign it? If you sign it, 
That is to say, you have the authority of them to sign it. Then we deal with it. If you are, if you are not ready to sign, like you said, you're not ready to sign it, and you are right because you're not a member of the IMC. So you have said it rightly. You are not a member, and you don't have authority to sign, to do it. Uh, respect for our brothers in the House of Representatives who are our brothers and our colleagues in the National Assembly. We will be adjoining this meeting till tomorrow. You are supposed to appear before us for a budget defense. When We, because of our respect for our colleagues in the House of Representatives, uh, we will be adjoining this meeting to tomorrow. Incidentally, um, you are supposed to come for your budget defense tomorrow. We will then grant audience to you, maybe if for one hour before or after the budget defense. And um, let me inform all the other members of uh, other people who have come that we have taken all your presentations. And we have taken notes. So if it is convenient for you, representatives of the staff, you can come. If it's not convenient, you don't have to come. If you want to, if you want to come, come. If otherwise, we have taken note of you, have taken your presentation. You, you can come. And any other person, any other group, if it's convenient for you to come, you can come. If you don't want to come, because you have all made presentations and you have all um, Okay. Um, I understand that a former honorable member, which uh, one? You are representing the NLC. Um, I don't know whether you have a position, something to tell us. You just want to come here to observe. You want to make a presentation? Okay. So you can come. We need you to come. So, um, but any other person who is um, who has made a presentation, you don't need to come, unless you just want to come and observe. But you don't need to come because um, we don't have time. We need to submit our report clearly, quickly to the Senate. But I want to correct one impression that I saw in what the so-called presentation. What we are doing tomorrow, or what we are here for, is based on petitions written to this committee, written to the Senate. It is not based on this committee's position. And that's why the Senate mandated us to go and investigate. It is a Senate resolution based on it. So for some, anybody to say that the committee, allegation by the committee, this committee has not made any allegation against anybody. This committee has not made any allegation. We are investigating a motion that was debated by the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and we are asked as the members of this committee to go and investigate the allegations put forward. 
So for anybody to say that the allegations were made by this committee, it's unfortunate, misleading, and to say the least, it's, it, it must be based on person misunderstanding of the workings of the National Assembly. And if he needs to know, he should ask and they'll tell him. So, I want to thank all my colleagues for your patience and understanding. I want to thank the gentlemen of the press who have been here to observe this proceeding. What we are doing today is to protect the interests of Nigerians. If you go out into the market or you have your telephone, you see people looking for a job every day because they have to maintain their families. And everybody in this country and the whole world, there's what is called fair hearing. That's why we're here, we're inviting everybody to come and present your position. So I want to thank you for coming. Thank my brother from the LN, uh, uh, Nigerian Labour Congress for your interest. The last visit, your chairman was here, uh, the president was here personally. Uh, that shows that the Congress is really interested in the interests of the Nigerian workers. We want to thank you for coming. We hope to see you tomorrow. This meeting, therefore, will start joined to 1 p.m. tomorrow.